Hello, this is William from Visual Components, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a machine for a works process task. Now you can use any type of component you want. What I'll do first is show you how to create a machine process task using components in the works library. I'll then explain how a machine process task is executed during a simulation. Finally, I'll walk you through creating some machine process tasks in components that you may want to use in the 3D world. Sounds good? Alright, let's get started by building a basic layout using components in the works library. So in the ECAT tab, I'll go to the collections drop down menu, I'll expand items by type, and then click works. From here I'll scroll down and find a component called works task control and add it to the 3D world. At this stage I could use any component in the works library that's already set up for a machine process task, for example the works call machine here. Instead, I'm actually going to scroll down just a bit and use this component here, works lath. So I'll drag it into the 3D world. And I'm actually going to rotate this component just a bit around the z-axis so we can see it better. All right. And now I'll add a works process component. Remember, you need this component to create tasks with. Let's go ahead and click fill and zoom in just a bit to get a better view of everything. So what you need to do now is get the name of the component you want to use. So I'll select the works lath component and I'll copy its name. So select all and copy. I'll now go to the works process component and in the general tab go to task and then click machine process. In single comp name enter the name of the component you want to use and I can now define how long I want this task to run for. So instead of 10 seconds I'll just do 5 seconds and then I'll click create task. I get feedback in the message panel, says that the task is created. However, I'm going to double check everything is set up, so I'll go to the task sub tab here, and then I'll click the note button. Notice, yes, there's the name of the task, this is the component I'm using, and this is how long the task will run for. Now, I don't want to run this task over and over again, so I'm going to close this out, and for run task times, I'm going to type in 1 and then hit the enter key. So the task will only be done once during the simulation. Let's actually run this simulation and see how things work out. So yep, there we go. The doors closed, the spindle spinned, and then the doors opened again, and the task was only done once. Great. Let's go ahead and stop the simulation. Now, what happened during the simulation to let this component here know that it's okay to go ahead and close the doors, run your program, and then open the doors again? The works process component looked for the name of this component in the 3D world. It then sent a signal to this component that then triggered uh, this component's program in a Python script. So I'll show you that now. I'll go to the Create tab, and notice I'm using the Works Lath component. And the Behavior tab here, you can notice that this component has a string signal behavior called Task. So if I double click it, you can see that this signal is connected to a Python script behavior. So when the signal is triggered, the Python script behavior will automatically get the notification, and you can then use that signal as a trigger for you know, any type of code you really that you want to develop yourself. So for any type of component you want to use with a machine process task, you definitely always need to have a string signal behavior that is named task, that's lowercase t. And I'll go ahead and give you an example now. So I'll go ahead and delete this component here in the 3D world. I'll go to the ECAT tab. And let's change the collection. I'll actually use the Web eCatalog 2014 collection. In the search box, I'll go ahead and type in, uh, let's type in process machine. We get a couple of results back. So let's actually go ahead and use this component here. So it's process machine, CNC lath. I'll drag into the 3D world. You can notice that this component actually has some doors here that can open and close. So to get the components set up, I'll go to the create tab. In the behavior sub tab, I'll create a string signal behavior. And remember, you need to name that signal task. I can now go ahead and create a Python script behavior. And I'll go ahead and connect my signal to that Python script. So the one I used was Python script underscore two. Click add. And we're all good to code. And now write the code. So I'll close this out. Go to my Python script. And instead of using the on signal, I'll actually use the on run event. So during the simulation, get a handle for the component. So comp equals get component. Get a handle for that signal I'm using. So I'll just name the variable task equals comp dot find behavior. And the name of the behavior is task. 
And I'm now going to use a method called trigger condition. And this will actually wait to evaluate an expression that I write here uh, until a trigger, like a signal event, is received from the Python script. So I'll use a lambda. And I can now use a function as an argument. So I'll say get trigger method is equal to task. And I don't want to return a none object, so I'll say and task should not equal none. All right, now if you want to know more about the methods I just used, you can go to VC script in the help manual. Trigger condition waits for a trigger, like an event type, uh, to happen during your simulation. And then the get trigger method actually specifies, you know, what trigger you're looking for specifically. So after that evaluates to true, I can then run some more code. And I'll go ahead and just print a message. So I'll print hello machine, exclamation point. All right, let's compile the code. Let's go and move this out of the way. So now we're in the simulation. Let's see what happens. Actually, first, though, I need to call this component in a machine process task. So let's go and get this component's name. So in the param tab, I'll go and copy that name property value. I'll go to the works process component and clear all tasks. I'll go ahead and delete the old name of the component I was using. Actually, I'm sorry, I, I pasted over it. I'll click create task. Go ahead and double check everything is correct. So notice there's the name of the task. This is the name of the component that I'm using. And it'll run for five seconds. So let's close and run the simulation. All right, and notice here in the message panel, we get some feedback. Hello, machine. Great. Now, let's go ahead and uh, do some other type of stuff. So let's go and close these doors and open them again during the simulation. I'll reset, go to the Create tab. Make sure I'm working with this component here. And notice that this component actually has a servo controller for its doors. So I'll go and double click those and see what kind of joints it has. So this component has a servo controller called doors joint. All right, so let's go and change that value. Close this out. I'll go to my Python script behavior. And instead of printing a message, I'll get a handle for that door controller. So actually we'll name the variable doors equals comp dot find behavior and let's see what was the name of the servo let's see just copy it from here and then paste and I'll use a method called move so doors dot move and let's go and move it 300 and then let's create a delay of two seconds and then let's move the doors again so doors dot move make it back to zero. Now if you want more information about this method of move you can go to VC servo controller in the help manual. Alright, so let's go ahead and compile the code. Alright, no errors right now. That is good. <laughs> so let's go ahead and run the simulation. And yep, the doors are closing. Wow, and they're opening again. Alright. Well, I'll now go ahead and give you another example of how you can use any type of component with the machine process task. You just need to set it up properly. So I'll reset the simulation, and I'll go and delete this component here. And let's go to the ECAT tab, and let's go and work with some uh, template components. So in the Collections drop-down menu, I'll go to Items by Type, and then Component Templates. From here, I'll add a conveyor template to the 3D world, and a feeder template. I'll now connect the feeder to the conveyor, like so. So when I run the simulation, a part is created and it moves along the conveyor's path. So let's reset. And let's set up the conveyor to work with the machine process task. So once again, go to the Create tab, create a string signal, and remember, name it task with a lowercase t. Close this out, create the Python script behavior we want to use. Let's connect that signal to the Python script to save us some time and make sure everything communicates like so. All right, let's now write some code. So instead of using the on run event, I'll use the signal event. Fine on signal. And by the way, if you want more information about that, you can just go to VC script in the help manual. And I'll say if signal dot name is equal to a string of task which is the single's name, colon. Go ahead and just print a message for right now. So, hello again, exclamation point. So when a signal event is received, it will evaluate if that signal's name is task. 
If it is true, then it will print hello again. All right, so let's go ahead and exit this out. And I now need to call this conveyor in the machine process task. So I'll go to the Param tab, get the component's name, and copy. Go back to the works process component, clear all tasks, get rid of that old name I was using, and paste in the new one. So we'll create the task, double check everything is set up properly. Yep. And now let's run the simulation. All right, and there's our feedback. Hello again. All right, that concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our community at community.visualcomponents.net. And as always, have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.